Top 25 Field Service Engineer Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly faced by field service engineers. Each question is designed to assess both technical skills and problem-solving abilities essential for success in this role. We will also provide comprehensive answers and tips to help you prepare effectively. Whether you're a seasoned professional or new to the field, this guide aims to enhance your interview readiness and boost your confidence. 1. Can you describe your experience with troubleshooting and repairing complex machinery or equipment? In my previous role as a service technician, I frequently encountered complex machinery that required in-depth troubleshooting skills. For instance, when faced with a malfunctioning CNC machine, I began by conducting a thorough diagnostic assessment using specialized tools. I identified a faulty sensor that was affecting its operation. After replacing the sensor and recalibrating the machine, I tested it to ensure optimal performance. This experience honed my ability to quickly analyze problems and implement effective solutions, ensuring minimal downtime for clients and enhancing their satisfaction with our service. 2. How do you prioritize your tasks when faced with multiple service requests? When faced with multiple service requests, I assess the urgency and impact of each situation. I prioritize tasks based on customer needs, deadlines, and potential consequences of delays. For instance, urgent requests that affect safety or operational capability take precedence. I also communicate with customers to manage expectations and provide updates on timelines. Using a systematic approach, I create a daily schedule that allocates time for high-priority tasks while remaining flexible to adapt to any new emergencies that may arise during the day. 3. Can you provide an example of a challenging technical problem you encountered and how you resolved it? During a routine maintenance visit, I encountered a critical failure in a manufacturing machine that had halted production. The error codes were vague, and the machine's manual did not provide clarity. I began by systematically isolating components, using diagnostic tools to identify the root cause. After several hours, I discovered a faulty sensor that was affecting the machine's operation. I sourced a replacement part from a nearby supplier and installed it. The machine was back in operation within the day, minimizing downtime and ensuring the client met their production targets. 4. What steps do you take to ensure customer satisfaction during a service call? Ensuring customer satisfaction starts with active listening to understand their concerns and needs. I communicate clearly about the service process, estimated time for repairs, and any potential challenges. During the service call, I maintain professionalism and a positive attitude, addressing any questions they may have. After completing the job, I confirm that everything is functioning correctly and provide guidance on using the equipment effectively. Finally, I follow up to ensure they are satisfied with the service and encourage feedback to continuously improve my approach. 5. How do you stay updated with the latest technologies and advancements in your field? Staying updated with the latest technologies is crucial for my role. I regularly participate in industry webinars and training sessions to enhance my knowledge. Subscribing to relevant journals and online forums keeps me informed about emerging trends and innovations. I also connect with peers and industry professionals through networking events, which allows for sharing insights and experiences. Engaging in hands-on workshops helps me apply new concepts in real-world scenarios. This proactive approach ensures that I remain knowledgeable and skilled in my field. 6. Describe a time when you had to work under pressure. How did you handle it? During a critical service call, a major machinery breakdown occurred at a client's facility, halting production. With the pressure mounting, I quickly assessed the situation and prioritized immediate tasks. I communicated transparently with the client, explaining the steps I was taking while assuring them of a prompt resolution. I focused on diagnostics, isolating the issue efficiently, and collaborated with my team remotely to expedite the repair process. Despite the intensity, I maintained a calm demeanor, which helped reassure the client. Ultimately, we resolved the issue within hours, minimizing downtime. 7. What safety protocols do you follow when working on site? When working on site, I adhere strictly to safety protocols to ensure my safety and that of others. I always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, including helmets, gloves, and safety glasses. Before starting any job, I conduct a thorough risk assessment to identify potential hazards. I ensure that all tools and equipment are in good working condition and are used according to manufacturer guidelines. Additionally, I communicate clearly with team members and clients about safety measures in place. Regular training sessions keep me updated on safety practices and reinforce the importance of a safety-first mindset. 8. How do you approach training customers on the proper use of equipment? Training customers on the proper use of equipment involves a structured approach. First, I assess the customer's familiarity with the equipment, tailoring my training to their skill level. I break down the training into manageable sections, focusing on key functionalities and safety protocols. Hands-on demonstrations are crucial, allowing customers to practice under my guidance. I encourage questions throughout the process to ensure clarity. After the session, I provide written instructions and resources for reference. Follow-up sessions or calls are offered to reinforce knowledge and address any additional concerns. 
fostering confidence in using the equipment. 9. Can you explain your experience with diagnostic tools and software? My experience with diagnostic tools and software includes using various industry standard applications and equipment to identify and troubleshoot issues in machinery. I have worked extensively with multimeters, oscilloscopes, and specialized diagnostic software tailored for specific equipment. These tools enable me to analyze performance data and pinpoint malfunctions efficiently. Additionally, I am familiar with software that assists in gathering historical data, allowing for predictive maintenance strategies. This experience has been pivotal in reducing downtime and improving service outcomes. 10. How do you handle difficult customers or situations where the customer is dissatisfied? When faced with difficult customers, I prioritize active listening to understand their concerns fully. I remain calm and empathetic, acknowledging their frustration. I reassure them that I am there to help and will do my best to resolve the issue. I ask clarifying questions to pinpoint the problem and provide solutions or alternatives. If the situation requires it, I escalate the matter to a supervisor while keeping the customer informed. Following up after the resolution helps reinforce trust and demonstrates my commitment to their satisfaction. 11. Describe a situation where you had to collaborate with a team to complete a project or service task. In a previous role, our team was tasked with upgrading an industrial machine for a client. We held a brainstorming session to identify the best approach, where each member brought their unique expertise. I focused on the technical aspects, while others handled logistics and customer communication. We divided tasks based on our strengths, ensuring everyone was aligned with the project's objectives. Regular check-ins kept us on track, and we successfully completed the upgrade ahead of schedule. The collaboration not only enhanced the project outcome but also strengthened our team dynamics. 12. What is your process for documenting service calls and repairs? My process for documenting service calls and repairs involves several key steps. Initially, I gather detailed information about the service request, including customer details, equipment specifics, and the nature of the issue. During the repair, I take notes on the diagnostic steps taken, parts replaced, and any tests performed. After completing the service, I create a structured report that includes a summary of the work done, time spent, and any recommendations for future maintenance. I ensure the documentation is clear and concise, allowing for easy reference in the future and facilitating communication with colleagues and customers. 13. How do you manage your time effectively while traveling between service locations? Effective time management while traveling involves careful planning and organization. I utilize digital tools to optimize my schedule, ensuring I allocate sufficient time for travel between service calls. Prioritizing appointments based on urgency and location helps minimize downtime. I also maintain a checklist of necessary tools and parts to avoid delays. By keeping an open line of communication with customers, I can adjust my schedule as needed. Continuous assessment of my travel routes allows me to identify the quickest paths, ensuring efficient service delivery while maximizing productivity. 14. Can you discuss a time when you had to learn a new technology quickly? What was your approach? Learning new technology quickly has been essential in my career. For instance, I was assigned to work with a new diagnostic software that was unfamiliar to me. To tackle this, I dedicated time after hours to explore online tutorials and documentation. I also reached out to colleagues who had experience with the software for tips and best practices. Additionally, I practiced using the software in a simulated environment, which helped me gain confidence. By the time I needed to use it in a real-world scenario, I was able to apply my knowledge effectively, ensuring a smooth service call. 15. How do you ensure that you have the necessary parts and tools before heading to a service call? To ensure I have the necessary parts and tools before heading to a service call, I follow a systematic approach. First, I review the service request details and identify the equipment involved. Then, I check the inventory of parts and tools relevant to that equipment, making sure to restock any items that are low. I also maintain a checklist for commonly used tools and parts, which I cross-reference before leaving. If a specific part is not available, I communicate with the customer to schedule a follow-up visit, ensuring minimal disruption to their operations. This preparation helps guarantee that I arrive equipped to address the issues efficiently. 16. Describe your experience with preventive maintenance and its importance in your role. Preventive maintenance has been a cornerstone of my work, ensuring equipment operates efficiently and reduces the likelihood of unexpected failures. In my previous roles, I implemented regular inspection schedules and performed routine servicing, which included cleaning, lubricating, and replacing worn parts. This proactive approach not only extends the lifespan of machinery but also enhances safety and performance. By identifying potential issues early, I've minimized downtime and saved costs for both the company and clients, reinforcing trust in my services. 17. How do you handle situations where you do not have an immediate solution to a technical problem? When faced with a technical problem that lacks an immediate solution, I first communicate transparently with the customer, letting them know I'm actively working on the issue. I then gather as much information as possible about the problem, consulting documentation or reaching out to colleagues for insights. 
If necessary, I escalate the issue to a specialist or conduct further research. Keeping the customer informed about my progress reassures them that their concerns are being taken seriously, and I make sure to follow up with a solution as soon as I have one. 18. Can you provide an example of how you have improved a process or procedure in your previous roles? In my previous role, I identified that the equipment maintenance scheduling was inefficient, leading to downtime. I proposed implementing a digital tracking system that automated reminders for preventive maintenance. Collaborating with the IT department, we developed a user-friendly interface that allowed technicians to log maintenance activities in real-time. This streamlined communication and accountability. As a result, we reduced equipment downtime by 30%, enhancing service efficiency. Engaging the team in the process ensured buy-in and increased adherence to the new system. 19. What role does communication play in your interactions with customers and team members? Effective communication is vital in my role, as it fosters trust and understanding between myself, customers, and team members. Clear communication helps me accurately assess customer needs and expectations, ensuring that I address their concerns promptly. Additionally, it enables seamless collaboration with colleagues, allowing us to share insights and solutions efficiently. Listening actively is equally important. It ensures that I fully comprehend the issues at hand and can provide tailored solutions. Communicating effectively not only enhances customer satisfaction but also contributes to a more cohesive team environment. 20. How do you assess the effectiveness of your service after completing a job? After completing a job, I assess effectiveness by gathering feedback from the customer regarding their satisfaction with the service provided. I also review whether the issue was resolved and if the equipment is functioning as expected. In addition, I take note of any follow-up actions needed and document the service details for future reference. Analyzing the time taken and any challenges faced during the job helps me identify areas for improvement. Finally, I encourage open communication, inviting customers to share their thoughts on the service experience. 21. Describe a time when you had to adapt to a significant change in your work environment or technology. During a major project, our company transitioned from traditional troubleshooting methods to a cloud-based diagnostic system. This change required me to quickly learn new software and adapt my approach to remote support. I dedicated time each day to explore the platform's features and attended training sessions. This proactive approach allowed me to effectively assist customers remotely, ensuring minimal disruption to their operations. As a result, I improved my efficiency and enhanced customer satisfaction by providing quicker resolutions through the new system. 22. How do you balance technical skills with customer service skills in your role? Balancing technical skills with customer service skills is essential for success in my role. I prioritize clear communication, ensuring customers understand the technical aspects without jargon. Actively listening to their concerns allows me to address their needs effectively. By demonstrating empathy, I build trust and rapport, making it easier to guide them through complex issues. Regularly updating my technical knowledge ensures I can provide accurate information while maintaining a friendly demeanor. This dual focus not only resolves problems efficiently but also enhances customer satisfaction and loyalty. 23. Can you explain your experience with remote troubleshooting and support? Remote troubleshooting and support have been integral to my role, allowing me to assist clients effectively from a distance. I typically utilize various communication tools, such as video calls and remote desktop software, to diagnose issues in real time. This approach not only minimizes downtime for customers but also enhances my ability to provide immediate solutions. I follow a structured process. I first listen carefully to the customer's description of the problem, then guide them through troubleshooting steps, and finally ensure that they are comfortable with any solutions applied. This proactive engagement fosters trust and satisfaction. 24. What strategies do you use to maintain a positive attitude while working in the field? Maintaining a positive attitude in the field is crucial for both personal well-being and customer interactions. One effective strategy is to set small, achievable goals throughout the day, which helps create a sense of accomplishment. I also focus on building strong relationships with colleagues and clients, as positive interactions can uplift my mood. Practicing mindfulness techniques, like deep breathing or short breaks, helps me manage stress. Lastly, I remind myself of the impact my work has on customers' lives, which keeps me motivated and engaged. 25. How do you handle feedback or criticism regarding your work performance? Receiving feedback is an essential part of personal and professional growth. I approach it with an open mind, viewing criticism as an opportunity for improvement. When I receive constructive feedback, I listen carefully, asking clarifying questions if necessary, to fully understand the perspective of the person giving it. I take time to reflect on the feedback before implementing any changes. Additionally, I appreciate positive feedback as it helps me identify my strengths in areas that may need more focus. This balanced approach allows me to evolve continuously in my role. In this video, we've explored the top 25 interview questions and answers for field service engineers, equipping you with the knowledge and confidence to excel in your job interviews. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting in the field, understanding these questions will help you stand out among candidates.
Remember, preparation is key to success in any interview. If you found this information helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing for more insightful content. Your support makes a difference and helps us continue providing valuable resources. Good luck with your future interviews.